What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here. Let's talk about the new backgrounds included in Big B's Glory of the Giants. We have two, the Rune Carver and the Giant Foundling. Let's go ahead and dive in. First of all, as with all of these, you now get feats with your backgrounds. If you choose to not take the feats contained within Big B's Glory of the Giants, which are again, uh, we'll, we'll get to those in a second. The options they provide to you is you could also take either the skilled feat or the tough feat from the player's handbook. Reminder that those will be updated in 2024. You would be taking those versions or the 2014. They're interchangeable, really. All right, so we have the giant foundling. This is someone who was raised by giants in some form or another. Uh, your skill proficiencies are Intimidation, Survival, Giant Language, and one other language of your choice. You get a set of backpack, a set of traveler's clothes, a small stone that reminds you of home, and a pouch with 10 gold pieces. And then they have a D6 table for your foundling origin. You were found as a baby by nomadic giants. After you had a strange dream as a child, your superstitious parents sent you uh, to study with a powerful but aloof storm giant, stuff like that. For this one, you get the feat Strike of the Giants. Again, if you choose not to take Skilled or Tough, Strike of the Giants we'll get to when we cover the feats video. And then they have a little bit here about building your Giants Foundling character. They don't give us an entire new set of feats, bonds, ideals, and traits, which I often wonder how many people truly use those to this day. But they do give you a D6 Giant traits here. You can either pick or roll. I embrace my shorter stature. It uh, helps me stay unnoticed and underinterested. Uh, or underestimated rather, the world always feels too big and I'm afraid I'll never find my place. The other one is Rune Carver. This is again someone who's kind of tapping into the unique runic magic style of the giants. History and perception, skill proficiency, a set of artisan's tools, and the giant language. You get that artisan's tool set as part of your equipment, a small knife, a whetstone, a set of common clothes, and a pouch with 10 gold pieces. There are D6 rune styles here. You inscribe runes in wax or clay with a fine metal needle, or you maybe stitch them into hems of clothing, things like that. And you'll get the rune shaper feet, which again, we'll cover when we get to the feats. And then again, we have a D6 rune carver personality traits. Is it, practi uh, is it practical to learn an ancient language that is rarely spoken? No, but is it fun? Very. Or life may be a whirlwind of chaos, but whenever I create my runes, I feel at peace. And we have a little bit here. It's called Big Heroes, Big Stories. It's just kind of a little bit. It, it fits background, in my opinion, so I thought we'd cover it here. It says, The remnants of giant's power, ancient and strong, echo throughout the worlds, touching the lives of individuals regardless of their background. The section provides various ways to narratively tie your character to the myth and might of giants. It also provides you with uh, what I think it's here is the biggest tease in this entire book. Uh, so it says, if your spell or, uh, spells or class draw elemental uh, forces from magic, you could obviously have this tied to giant power, right? Druid circle of the land might feel a connection with the giants who inhabit the land. A monk of four elements might, you know, try to emulate the god, you know, the all father of giants. You might say you have giant ancestry, maybe it's something to do with your being a sorcerer or why you can rage as a barbarian. Uh, giant foes, perhaps as someone like a ranger or a paladin, someone that's out against the giants in some way. Uh, giant lore, right? They mentioned here the rune knight, which obviously fits pretty well. The rune knight fighter or possibly the college of lore bards studying giants. Uh, as giant made accessories, you have some sort of giant crafted item uh, that you use as a spell casting focus. It could be your, your spell book as a wizard. You could probably find a way to work something in there with artificer as well. Uh, again, you could worship a giant god that could work well for your cleric or a paladin, possibly even a warlock patron. Uh, again, a giant could be your patron. There's a section for giant patrons in chapter three, which we'll talk about in a future video. And again, the biggest tease in the entire book, primeval animals. You could have a connection with giant size or prehistoric animals. You might call in the spirits of cave bears, direwolves, or eagle-eyed pteranodons, or you might use your magic to take the shape of such creatures, or you could have a dinosaur companion, whether this is, again, and as you can see, a druid summons a primeval beast. Again, we had the circle of the primeval druid in the Unearthed Arcana playtest that for this book, where the path of the giant barbarian ended up in the final product, and unfortunately, circle of the primeval got left behind. But it also showcases a Dilophosaurus here, 
This is also a Jurassic Park style Dilophosaurus. Yeah, for those of you who are a little more knowledgeable about paleontology, uh, there's no paleontological record that Dilophosaurus have a frill or spit venom or anything like that. It's a cool thing they added in Jurassic Park, and it's kind of persisted in other media. But the biggest letdown is that they show this Dilophosaurus and they show this circle of primeval druid and neither one of them are in the book, right? I thought for sure we were going to get a Dilophosaurus stat block in here. No such luck. It also was, um, I had mentioned it earlier when I saw the Whiz Kids. Now I'm actually figuring some things out with uh, Whiz Kids here. And there's a little bit about um, birthplace, but we'll talk about the Whiz Kids thing. I looked at the box uh, and the back of the Whiz Kids miniature box, like the limited edition Big B's one, and it shows Circle of the Primeval Druid and a Dilophosaurus. And now I'm thinking Whiz Kids just gets access to all the concept art or all the art for the book, and then uses that to craft the minis. So they made a Dilophosaurus and a Circle of Primeval Druid, both of which are not things that exist, but they have the art for it, so they made the minis to match. Um, and then we also have some giant trinkets, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, you could have a giant trinket, which is a giant size item that you could use as a weapon, right? A match could be a torch for you, a giant letter opener could be a longsword. Um... This is, again, if you kind of grew up or found ancient giant ruins. We have the primordial nexus here. You grew up surrounded by powerful magic, and it says perhaps you're exposed to some sort of elemental mark. Your skin harmlessly feels blazing hot or freezing cold. Patches of your skin are veined with stone, marble, or obsidian. A lot of cool flavor bits for your character. Uh, you spent your formative years deep beneath the ground, sequestered away. If you, uh, again... You've seen few colors, instead primarily experience the world in shades of black and white. The idea of space with no ceiling terrifies you. Uh, tall tales, some folk are content to merely listen to stories of giants, like Jack and the Beanstalk or what have you. You stumbled into a giant castle in the sky when you were younger, but no one believed your story. You aim to prove them wrong. Your siblings say giants and other enormous creatures are stories for children. You hope to slay such a creature and bring back proof of the existence out of spite. And then we'll roll into the feats in the next video. But it's nice to see these little bits of, even though there are only six options and there's a handful, this kind of flavor that can help inform you. Now, if you're like top-notch role player, Mr. Mrs. their creativity, you have a ton of options and like you just have characters stacked away in your brain for years to come. And you're like, hey, all right, I'm going to play a giant character. Let me just pull out my, 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 you know, Rolodex? God, I'm dating myself. Rolodex of options for a character here. Uh, and then be like, oh yeah, I have all this giant lore just tucked away in my brain for usage if I ever play a giant-based character. But for people who don't have that, this is a nice little thing for them to be able to pick a couple of options or, or not. They don't have to, but they give you things to possibly inform your character decision. So anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the backgrounds included in Big Beast Glory of the Giants. Next time we're going to dive into the feats. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.